Good morning. Please join in singing hymn number 549, Come Now, Almighty King, number 549. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate together these sacred mysteries, let us call upon the Lord for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the brokenhearted. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. 
Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. What a beautiful psalm, huh? That God has given us the empowerment through, to praise him through faith, through the grace given to us in our baptism. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. And we're in great company because the gospel passage begins with the Lord Jesus himself praising God and thanking him for the gifts that the Father has given him. Every soul, all creation is handed over to his Son. For you and for me who claim him as Lord and Savior through faith and with hope and in that love that is sacrificial, that means we are part of his treasury in his kingdom. That's nothing small or inconsequential, is it? It's very significant. So if you have a day when you feel like you amount to nothing, that you're worth next to nothing, that someone has told you you're a loser, 
or that life has treated you unfairly and unjustly, remember that the Lord himself was glad and rejoiced because you and I and every soul in every age and circumstance are part of the treasury God the Father has given him. Wow. I guess it doesn't get any better than that. But the sticking point can be, do I know Jesus so that I can thank him? Do I know where to find him so I can praise him? Do I know how to follow him so I can serve him? And it isn't always easy. Zechariah the prophet in the first reading tells the people, be prepared for your king and your God, your Messiah, to come your way, but oh, he's not going to come as you expect. He's going to come on the fold of an ass, not carried in by chair bearers on a golden throne, surrounded by those who serve him in a royal palace. No, he will come in a very humble way, just as he did into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover that was the beginning of his passion and the establishment of the Holy Eucharist we still celebrate and share to this very day at his command. That great grace of humility in which he enters into our lives can leave us pondering like the people of Zachariah's time, where is he? Why is it that when I pray, I don't hear his voice? Where is that sacrificial love that is meant to enfold me? Well, St. Paul in the second reading gives us the key, and that key is the Holy Spirit. Paul reminds us that unless it is in and through the Holy Spirit that we call upon the Lord, then it isn't a prayer. The Holy Spirit forms the words of our prayer, so we don't even have to worry if we get the punctuation right. All we have to do is be sincere and give our need to Jesus through the Holy Spirit for the glory of the Father. And the prayer is simple, to invite the Holy Spirit. It's three words. Even I can remember it. So in the morning, every morning, begin your morning as an offering to God of that day and simply say, come Holy Spirit. And Jesus has told us that the Spirit will bring the graces sufficient for that day, its trials, its troubles, its joys, its celebration, its wonderment, its confusion, its fear, its doubt. God will give the graces to respond and not react to the life of this day. Once again, God does not deceive nor does God abandon. And that's why the gospel begins by Jesus saying, you'll never be alone. I will be with you always and everywhere and any time because the Father has given you to me. Will you love me? I think we want to. I know we need to. I know we have, I know we do, but we don't know what the future holds, so will I. So Jesus assures us in these beautiful words of this wonderful gospel, and he doesn't command it. He extends an invitation. He is not like a guardian who says, I command you, come here. No, the words are gentle and simple. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. 
Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me. For I am gentle, I am meek, I am humble of heart. And your souls will find rest. For my yoke is easy, my burden light. How? Because he's paid the price upon his cross. And when he hands that cross to you and to me, he doesn't let go of it. He helps us lift it high. He follows us on our way of the cross. He's there upon it still in this unending sacrifice, but he is raised and ascended to be our faithful judge once again so that no one is lost. Will I heed his invitation today, not worrying about tomorrow, not only regretting that I didn't wholeheartedly yesterday, will I today? Come to me, he says, and he calls us by name. What will my answer be? Hmm. It's an RSVP. Listen, I meant to get there, but something else came up. Oh, you found yourself in the thicket, in the weeds, choke that seed of faith. Well, maybe. You know, I just can't make it. But let's do lunch, huh? How about the supper of the lamb? He'll respond. Come taste and see the goodness of the Lord. You see, he's not going to let go. He won't shove and he never pushes. He'll nudge. He'll smile, maybe chastise when necessary. But the invitation remains. May our response truly be through faith, hope, and love. I am here for you, Lord. I want to do your will. I come to you as I am. And I entrust myself to you so that I can become all you have made me to be. Let us together profess our faith, sharing in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, God is always willing to reach out to us in our need, if only we ask. In confidence, let us ask God to hear and answer our prayers. For the Catholic Church, that we may not be rebellious, but rather listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit working in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved country, that God will open our hearts to the truth of his gospel, that his peace may rule in our hearts and his justice guide our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father Francis and for Austin Anthony, our bishop, that they continue the good work of building the kingdom of Christ on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For peace between nations, that delivered from every turmoil, all people may serve God in freedom and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jessica and Gabriel Goodrow, who were joined in the sacrament of matrimony, may they be a visible sign of God's love for his people all the days of their married life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our Book of Intentions and the prayers that we offer now in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, help us to live the example of love we celebrate in this Eucharist, that we may come to its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. There 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the blessing of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing hymn number 689, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 689. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. If you are a visitor at this Holy Mass from throughout the Diocese of Helena, Welcome to your cathedral church. If you are a visitor beyond the boundaries of our diocese, we welcome you as sisters and brothers in Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for gathering before his holy altar, for bringing him to this holy place, for rekindling through this mass the fire of God's love in the temple of your souls and for bringing his peace into the world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve our Lord.